Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Man Stevens, and the man that made Roxanne turn the red light on, Ryan Preston. So, I was been reading in the news how Disney's most likely going to buy Fox Entertainment with like 71 point something billion dollars. So if what I've been reading is correct, they'll solely own the rights to Star Wars and the Indiana Jones franchise. Considering they have rides for both, why not? <laughs> well, I just think just it'd be... putting that out there. I mean, they've had rides for them for very, very, very long time. Well, I actually think it's cool because, you know, Comcast was trying to buy them because they own uh, NBC Universal, And... I actually would rather have Disney have the rights to that, because at least Disney's fairly respectful to the source material, unlike Comcast, who can just suck a dick. Well, Disney at least has a, has a few different faces they put on. You know what I mean? They, they, they own enough properties where they're not throwing the Disney logo at you, but, you know, like, didn't they own Miramax for a while? Yeah. Wasn't... I don't think I don't they... think they own Miramax. Wasn't no. that a 20th I century? Disney owned Miramax. Um, they might have. Well, look that up, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I will. Actually, I'm, I'm there, there's this thing that's been around, you know, called Google. <laughs> I mean, just putting that out there, you know. I mean, oh, but uh, in any case, like so have they, yeah, they have a lot of different hats they can put on and a lot of different titles they can, you know, release things under. So it doesn't all have to be under the mouse. Well, they all do goose step together. And you're right. They actually, they own, uh, Disney owned them from 1993 to, 20, really? to 2010. Huh. Yeah, there you um, go. What, I don't huh. know. Let's see. Hey, my memory works just fine. Fuck Google. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> All right. Um, and and no, thank you. I. I'll I'll skip that. <laughs> um, it is interesting though, taking like the divisions they have. Um, they used to own Dimension. Does it Dimension Films, Prestige Films? Uh. Harvey Weinstein. Dimension Home Entertainment. There was a... Bill Cosby. All the rapists. <laughs> the... Oh, talk about that. Guy Pierce was actually talking about um, Kevin Spacey. Okay. Guy Pierce did um, uh, something... Uh, L.A. Confidential with him. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about how he was... And this is on a... And I think it was an interview show in Australia. Was talking about how he's kind of handsy. And Guy Pierce says, that, luckily I wasn't a 14-year-old. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I, was, and he seems to be pretty chill. I've never read any read anywhere or heard him or him talk crap about anybody. He seems fairly neutral, but he just laid into him. I'm like, yes. Wow, well, all right. Must have been really handsy. I'm a, a big fan of Guy Pierce. That we know, we we do know. I'm talking to the audience. Okay, all three and a half of them. Isn't that us? Okay, the point five. <laughs> so you're just <laughs> counting Ryan now. <laughs> well, Ryan's girlfriend, technically. So, I was. Uh, Netflix got. Uh, you're not paying attention. That doesn't count. So, Netflix got in The Last mm. Jedi. They're now streaming on Netflix. So, I was actually watching it. Hey, I could finally see it. And I got to admit, there was something that really annoyed me that they had in there. I want to see if, what Ryan thinks about this. They were shooting the cannon from the. Dreadnought or whatever, and it was arching. So they it were. It was sh- arching. Yeah. They were shooting arching shots. Yeah, I'm pretty shots. sure that's not how ballistics work in space. But that's are, what I was thinking. But it's I was laser watching. beams. No, they were like plasma bolt things. So it's like halo. They didn't really go into the thing of it, they but control it. But I'm just wondering what gravitational forces they were accounting for. Because they weren't near a star, they weren't near a black hole. I mean, I could understand leading a spaceship as it's moving, but the, but I mean, like if you're firing in in a line to line sight in space, I I don't see anything that they would be trying to account for when it's like lined up and straight on. Well, there's a uh, there's a uh, a great YouTube series called uh, Because Science. Okay. Um, and they kind of break down you know different movie things as far as the. Uh, um, you know, is this Technical possible? Would that work that way? Blah, blah. You know, and, and usually for the geeky shit, like would the superhero landing, 
be an effective way to absorb the shock of landing from a high distance? And no, is the answer to that, by the way. Oh, you mean the fist but, and on um, the knee? No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll Lois die uh, if she, you know, she has coitus with Superman. Technically, well, yes. For, like, for example, one of the ones that, um, I mean, well, he breaks down the math of everything. Like, he actually goes into the physics of why you would not want to be accelerated super fast by the Flash, for example. Because you would um, die and your organs would because basically you would disintegrate. Essentially, yeah. in your skin. Yeah, yeah they, the, your organs and everything would disintegrate. Right. So, but he'll break down the math, and it's fucking great. Um, but uh, he's done a lot of Star Wars things, and the one thing I've learned because of science is we have to take everything in the Star Wars universe with a grain of salt. There, there's no possible, like, plausible, and if this was true, then that's how the lightsabers work. The lightsabers work because of fucking magic. So, so okay? he, so he can so the, the arcing shot and from coming from that dreadnought, as far as I'm concerned, works because of magic. So, so basically he disregarded the fiction in science fiction, right? I mean, but, I, but I'm literally watching well, it. Well, that's the point, uh, is that, but, that it's, it's, there's a lot of things in the science fiction realm that he said, like, look, if this was true, this would be possible, you know? Well, okay. Um, he now, breaks down how Rick and Morty has, like, one of the best time uh, uh, time skip, uh, the way they keep track of their, their time jumps. Oh, okay. And, if and traveling means, through time. <laughs> but, but now, I, I was giving the grain of salt to uh, Poe in his in his you know the the x-wing and the you know the g-forces that would actually basically kill him that he was continually doing every every 30 seconds um yeah, would, and 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 there's no banking in space yeah you know what that, I mean? that's you, what you i'm saying if he did a, an airplane but if he did a banking shot in space in that x-wing wearing just whatever he's wearing he would literally die how many rails did he hit but um Probably a lot. I'll tell you who actually ship. got it. Who actually got a really, really cool, Stimpak, or, Stimpak. or at least who close enough to where it was going for the for the actual physics, even though it was still totally science fiction. Was uh, Battlestar Galactica? Oh yeah, had the, their dog fighting done with like the thrusters. Yeah. And, oh, it's fucking badass. Yeah, it was very well thought out. But which yeah, is amazing the, considering it's a sci-fi channel. Then not exactly the the bastion of reality coming from that true, network. But um, that, yeah, that being said, Battlestar Galactica might be one of the best sci-fi things ever made. No, I agree there. Now, um, did, did they talk about? Um, so I'm assuming the way you're saying it, they talked about like the inertia and stuff. Like they didn't talk about it, but well, they, they did have a lot of compensation thing for that. Well, like they showed about it. You yeah. know, like if if their engines die, they talked about oh we're gonna just keep drifting and yeah, there was know, like all of a sudden you stop. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about that show is there's no big computer telling you what's wrong with everything. It's literally like crew chiefs down there turning wrenches, yeah. you know, making sure that the that the that the you mean the Cylon have planes to get in. You know, you mean, you mean the, the Cylon and the entire premise of the show how they can't really have that type of technology. Hmm. Like but, networking, is yeah. Well, illegal. the whole the whole show it's a it's basically a navy drama. Yeah, it, it's it's a navy political drama. Yeah. That, that basically you know, sums up the whole thing. <laughs> jag in space. <laughs> I don't know about jag. I or mean, NCIS, there really wasn't a lot of. Know? I mean, there wasn't really a lot of. You know. Uh, so does, law does, was there a Scientologist like on the show, just like on Jag? Yeah. Yeah. That, that Probably. Was, that was all the leaders. <laughs> they were all Scientologists. Yeah, I was watching. The, I was watching Last Jedi, and that that arching shot that they continually did was really starting to bug the shit out of me. It. Again, it's on my list of things to see. I'll have. But to I mean, there so was really no point. planet nearby, no great star, no black hole. I mean, it's just like you just line up the shot. Well, I think a <laughs> I lot mean, of the universe. Well, obviously, a lot of the universe was created prior to us knowing all of these things, or at least them all being sort of common knowledge that they are. You know, because it's not like we're fucking scientists; we're dummies. No, so I'm a if we know this shit, shit that means everybody knows this shit. Everybody knows uh, they, a fucking but, scientist. But with modern, the, but the way they are with a modern you you television, though, wouldn't you, they adjust You for can't it? retroact. No. No, that's the thing. is You can't retroactively go back and change the laws of the universe that was already created. You know, obviously Didn't now we know this. better and we can do things differently, but not with Star Wars. You have to keep it the way it is. Well, I mean, they could easily make that change because there was really no big space battles in between against but if you, you know, I mean, if you make that or, change, 
then you change the physics of the X wings. You, you don't bank and, anymore. You're using thrusters. The lightsabers don't function well, properly. See, I mean, you can't the, start the, adding Earth the banking or our universe physics. You see, the banking. I don't. I I, I agree. I don't think you can change, but no. you could make it so you could hit. You know, the, the laser blasts or whatever went straight, unless there's a reason for it. You know, you, you have some sort of story device that's saying, oh, my there, blasters There is no are... reason for it other than it looks cool. Yeah. That's the only reason they did it back in the day in the 70s, because nobody knew any better. You know, now that we do, it's either you make a Star Wars movie or you make something else. So we're, we're all basically a bunch of smart marks and well, telling them what to do. Well, let me just put it this well, way. Well, my point is is that if you're, if you're you can't nitpick the, the, the arcing blast if you're not going to nitpick everything else. Um, we, mm-hmm. we did a show called Real Fix Reviews for six years. I, I think we can nick, nitpick about that. Nitpick? Yeah, exactly. But that's my point is that, that it's all on equal footing. So, you know, that's apples right. to apples, it, it's yeah. either everything is awful and this movie sucks or I'm just going to take everything with, with uh, you know, a great assault. assault. See previous statement. I mean, a planet full of salt. <laughs> um, now, but I want to bring yes, up... Yes, a planet full of salt. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Nice reference. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, but bring up Star Trek. I mean, I never saw them do any arching shots. Think about it. Well, because the, the show wasn't about the, the, the visuals. It was it, The visuals were only to serve the story. The story was about the morality thing. I, I would no, he's got I, a good point. It was yeah. about society, and I mean, Kirk I, was the first one to do interracial kissing. Yeah, but next generation on, G- on national television, the later iterations were about the visuals because the visuals really added to. It was the atmosphere that added to the show. It may not have been um, uh, the main character like in Star Wars, <laughs> but it was definitely an ansel- an important ancillary Wait, character. The, the Force. It, there wasn't the Force in Star Trek. You had um, the, the mind meld. I don't know. Right. But Klingons raping everybody. Allegedly. You didn't watch the same episode I did. <laughs> <laughs> or was that or was that the Apparently playpen? Not. The playpen version? Is that even still oh. wrong? I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Oh never mind. Right. Penthouse, I think, is what we actually meant. Whatever. Anyways. Um so <laughs> this, so anyways, that, that went way what, in what, left field. That did opinion on just uh, I don't, know. I don't know. I just can't. I don't know. Anyway, um, so Brian, you remember um, Kenny versus Spenny, right? I know John never watched it. I know of. I it. remember. <laughs> really? That sounds so enthusiastic. Um, so, I found a show that I think is very similar to it, but it's like a it's like a very tamed down version of it, and it's a BBC show called The Joys of Tech. And so what they do is they have this guy. The, the, I don't forget. I forget their names. I haven't paid attention that much. Um, but they have one of the guys who brings in a lot of tech for everyday life, just to change it and things like that. And then the other guy is obviously not so much on tech. So is one like a luddite, basically. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, Look it up. <laughs> yes, and I'm talking to you. Anyways, but so wait, not... I, I missed this. Is this this is not starring Kenny and Spenny. No, no, no he's no, saying it's, it's similar. Okay. I'm it's saying it's similar in the it's aspect similar, of they take two guys who are like. I didn't think anything in the world was was a similar uh, similar to uh, Kenny versus Spenny. Well, I think you should watch the show, and you'll kind of get where I'm going with it. Um, I mean, there's no like punishment for challenges. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> You mean humiliations, I think. Yeah, yeah humiliations no, is what they use. <laughs> um, but um, there was actually one, I mean, like, literally, I I literally laughed my ass off at, at one at one point of it. Um, but but I think it's, like, a show that I, th- I think they should do more often where they take two spectrums, you know, two, two very extremes of the spectrum and bring them together. I think so how, they don't do that show anymore. How... How extreme was this guy as far as being a technologist? Uh, well, he's more like was a he like, kind of a fanboy. Was he a bleeding edge fanboy or? <coughs> well, I like, think it's more like, of like the fact that he looks and tries to to find things that are kind of like on the extreme of it. Like he found this neck, uh, basically like a neck airbag thing that that goes and protects your head. 
So so basically, he's like the ga- a gadget guy. If there yeah, if, yeah. if there's technology that'll even remotely improve his daily life, he gets it. Yeah, basically. Okay. And he and I don't know if he's actually doing it with his own money. Like he's actually brought in some things that mm. are like in like the thirty five hundred, forty five hundred dollar range. Honestly, what it's probably sponsors. Well, that's the thing is, like, I don't see how the sponsors would really do it. Well, like, like for example, all these car shows you see where they're working on cars, 95% of those products are from sponsors. Yeah, but the, he's not out there saying this is from this brand. You don't necessarily have to. Eh, that's a good point. You're like, oh, like, what usually they do, they'll say, like, um, like uh, Bob's House of Hardware provided this. You know, it, it, it's usually kind of a small throwaway line, like, they throw in. Um, if it's not on, necessarily, if it's on YouTube, you have to. Well, it's on Netflix, so I, oh. I think maybe they cut it out. Anyways, um, but there's like one where the guy decided, like, I'm gonna have all these products that you bring in, and we're gonna test to find out how durable they are. And he basically took like uh, some waterproof bags and a couple of things, and he's like, we're gonna put this stuff in there. We're gonna take this like thousand dollar laptop and put it in this waterproof bag, and it's gonna go down to the water park. Oh God. Yeah, so there's things like that that they kind of do that. That's pretty amusing. <laughs> but he actually took the uh, he found the the non tech guy, the luddite, had a, a Nokia that he put in a Ziploc bag and put it in the waterproof bag down the a water bar. A Nokia. Bark. Yeah, the Nokia didn't survive. Like a smartphone? Yeah, well, not no, like a Nokia. Well, like so the old school like, Nokia. Yeah, the Nokias that you know you could use as a brick. You could kill somebody with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but I, I was watching it. It kind of reminds me of Kenny versus Spenny in some <laughs> ways. But I, I mean, like Ryan, what was the worst humiliation that you remember? Oh man, because um, there's one that sticks in my mind, and it'll always stick in my mind. It's been so long since I've seen him. I remember more of the the stunts than anything. Like yeah, they're being tied to a goat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the funniest thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what's the one that you that sticks out? Well, there there was one, and it was like uh, I don't remember the the exact thing, but Kenny Kenny got drunk the night before, didn't brush his teeth, and came downstairs and took a butter knife and scraped his tongue and oh put it in God. a cup for Spenny to to put in his mouth. That that was the grossest and most horrid humiliation that stuck out in my mind from Kenny versus Spenny, and that will like always mortify me. And in other news, yeah, that's, and in other that's, news, that's in, in that's Sony, a in their own amazing way of screwing stuff up, instead of uploading a trailer to YouTube, they uploaded the whole fucking movie. What movie? Kali the Killer, K H A L I. I haven't even heard of it. Sony accidentally uploaded an entire movie to YouTube instead of Trailer Tuesday, and they didn't take it down for more than six hours. Oh, I repeat, shit. That is hours. gone. <laughs> the trailer wow. for Kali the Killer was intended to announce the film or released, be released on DVD and digital platforms. You see, it wasn't a block, It wasn't important, apparently an important movie like Avengers. Not like a blockbuster. But it um, is it like Ichi the Killer? I, it's let's see if I can. It's since been removed. By the way, I love that. Oh, it's been removed. No, it's been <laughs> downloaded like uh, probably yeah, a billion no, times. No, I, I, I will say I was kind of bummed that I wasn't home because I would have at least like. Well, let me save this for later. So hold up, if you give me a second, I'll bring it up on the on the old guy tech TV <clears throat> iPad. <laughs> Is God, that a plug? Yes. It's a poor. It's a poor man's plug. Um, I just I hear uh, Kali the Killer 2017. Oh, well, I'm assuming what? this is it. Was it made in 2017? Yeah, it I had assume to be. it wasn't released last year. And... No, it's just 2017 though. This could be a different one. This could be the same. I'm not really sure. But according to this, if this is the this uh, if this is the right one, after deciding to retire, an East LA hitman decides to take on the last job to help support his ailing grandmother's end of life care. But everything falls apart when. He developed empathy for targets of his hit and is forced to make a tough decision. Well, that just sounds stu- stupid. Now I know why Sony released it. <laughs> yeah, just just put the whole thing on there. By the way, that would be great if that's the next step for shitty movies. Instead of releasing the theaters and direct-to-DVD... They just release it on YouTube. <laughs> 
So yeah, I, that, I don't even think I want to watch that. No wonder it was like uh, um, just released. So look for Shrek 17 on YouTube any day now. I can't even find it on on IMDb. Am I misspelling it? What is it? It's Kali the Killer? K H A L I K H. Yeah, Kali. Um. I just couldn't imagine whoever did that either got fired or applauded. I'm kind of wondering <laughs> which one that is. Or disappeared. <laughs> right. He comes back to work and he's missing missing a pinky. No, it's just I mean, yeah. That's a, that's a pretty. Um, I mean, wow, the amount of money somebody's going to lose on that. I mean, look. I mean, things get pirated anyway, and I suppose it's probably going to be pretty mitigated because the people that were going to pirate it were probably going to just pirate the shit anyway. So. I know that guy. So I'm just like amazed I mean, that this guy, guy even has like a, like an acting career like that. He looks familiar. Oh, it's another thing I just, <clears throat> sorry, I just was looking for something else and discovered, uh, Disney has at least temporarily put the kibosh on the individual, uh, Star Wars films. Because Solo, the movie, apparently bombed in the box office. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so what do you think? Um, I mean, I want to see Solo um, at some point, but I don't have time. I think they might have been... Overzealous? Not biting out more they can chew, but yeah, maybe a little overzealous, a little a little too excited that they got the Star Wars property and they, I and think they so wanted too. to just throw everything in there and they, well, they got I, really ambitious now, about it. I think what they did is they decided right off the bat... Han Solo is a very likable character. There's a lot of people that are big Solo fans, and they decided that they were going to try to do a standalone movie with him. And I think that is what they did instead of listening to the fans who were calling for <clears throat> Young Yoda, Knights of the Old Republic, thing that were things that were not necessarily better sequels. Uh, not better sequels, but not necessarily like things that we would already know. I mean, if they really wanted to do it, um, do you guys know the origin of the Millennial Falcon and why it's the only one? Any you guys ever wondered that? That's because it was a <clears throat> prototype that they were trying to do that they had a mid-range fighter well, to be in between the TIE fighter, and it was actually an Imperial design that was which, supposed to go to them, and it was leaked, and the Millennium Falcon was a prototype that got which stolen. Which lore is that from? That's from canon. That's not extended? Interesting. That's so, canon. According to The Motley Fool, more than a month, dot com, I think, more than a month after the film's release, Solo's box office sits roughly at $350 million worldwide. Yeah. That might not sound too Ooh, bad, does. but with an estimated no, pretty, $250 million dollar production budget God and a big damn. advertising push, the picture is now expected to lose somewhere in the neighborhood. And I quote, this is a big, bold font, ladies and gentlemen, $50 million. Much of that could be recuperated through home release distribution of merchandise and even possible that these, those, these factors will put the picture in the black over long term. I don't actually think they're going to make any money in the long run hmm. on DVD releases because I don't think not too many people are like us. I mean, even I'm more selective on what I purchase these days. Well, I just don't it's, see it. It's it will luckily, unlike swag, like, like the, the, the T-shirts and stuff. Other the other properties that are going to pay for it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Like Pirates of the Caribbean 12. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, really didn't Star like Wars. the Dead Here's the bottom line with me in Star Wars. I don't want fucking Disney to make 14 mediocre Star yeah. Wars movies. I want them to make three really good ones. Yeah. See, here, here was my... That's it. Here, here's my thought, and it was my thought to begin with, is what they should have done, is they should have made the seven... Wait a couple of years and then release another one. Wait a little bit longer. Make good quality like content like Ryan's saying, but release it slowly because they're, they're shotgunning approaching it. They're just like, boom, 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 boom. Because literally the last three or four years, we've had like three Star Wars movies. It's a little much. Well, I, it's like Transformers. I, they might have been doing it just to try to bank <clears throat> off the excitement of Disney now having Star Wars. Um, but why it's Star and, Wars? People have been a fan of it since the seventies. I think you could slow slow roast this thing, and people would still be excited. I mean, people have been Jones into the bit for thirty years to see a a sequel. I know I have. So well, I, I mean, yeah, Lucas... but I think they realize the the amount of money that's on the table. You know what I mean? If you do these once a year, because no matter here's the problem, man. Even after one, two, and three. You know, and, and I will defend the first one, even though there's not a lot to defend about it. Phantom? Mostly I defend the pod racing. Um, oh, God. Really? I'll defend a couple of... Come on, the pod racing was awesome. 
<laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a first in the Real Flicks Reviews and Mad Trio <laughs> podcast. James took off the headphones and was it was almost getting off the chair. What the fuck was wrong with the pod racing? It was like the, like the most entertaining thing about that movie. He's not wrong. The problem is that movie was so bad that was the best plot, the best action scenes, and, well, the best written scene. No, well, boring. first of all, I'm a sucker for tournament, okay? So anytime there's a tournament in the movie, I'm fucking in. Um, I can't wait for the Kumite version of a Star Wars movie. <laughs> uh, Did you love yeah. the quest? <laughs> <laughs> that actually I mean, wasn't that bad of a movie. As far as tournament goes, you know? It's the same movie. It's Bloodsport 4? No. I think at the time it was Six? Like, I mean, it's it's it's. I know. I think you're right with four. All those movies, Jean Claude. Oh, when it got released, it would be number four. Okay, I'm trying to remember. There's been so many. It might be. Yeah, every yeah. every movie that Jean Claude Van Damme has done, you can just title Jean Claude Van Damme one through thirty. <laughs> Pretty much. Except for oh, Double what, Team. What double is Team oh, is, is just kind of out there. Van Damme fifteen. I mean, Double Team doesn't fit in the sequence anywhere, though. And don't forget, he <laughs> did he did do one with. Uh, God, uh, Rodman too. That's double team. What's the one where he was? Playing yeah, that's twin? double team. The one where he's twin? Are you, he, he, you, you he had the twin. Um, that double. That's not. Oh, so you're thinking about double impact? Is that one? Because there's another one where he plays a twin. No, double team is with him and Rodman. Uh, what was the one where he he's a twin? I don't know. I know what you're talking about though. Okay, so there's there's four Bloodsport movies. There's Bloodsport, Bloodsport no, two, Bloodsport three, the, the, and Bloodsport four. The no, dark. Kumite. If you took the if you took the Bloodsports. <clears throat> The quest would be number four because of the way that the, it was released. So yeah. it would be released as number four, but they did the <laughs> the whatever blood sport like four years after. So the quest came out in ninety six. Ninety six. Okay. Yeah. So technically, it Look, would be blood sport three. Oh, would it we be? all know blood that sport, he peaked with time cop. Blood oh sport god, three I was one year off. <laughs> God, whatever. You know what? Time Cop was really cool for back in the day. It had pretty, some pretty amazing effects. I also like... Yeah, but the one was basically Time Cop. Yeah, yeah dude, my, a 12-year-old me was a big Time Cop fan. That's for uh, me. I, sure. My favorite part of Time Cop was actually how the they said how two entities can't occupy the same space. Therefore, if somebody touched their older self, it would, you know, remove them from timeline. And it's really interesting that that was, like, carried over into so many different time travel I haven't seen that anywhere things. else, though. Oh, I've seen it in, like, a like, bunch really? of them. Yeah, well, really. it, is a, it is a paradox. Yeah, that's I what they're do, saying. It's I do paradox. know the gun they use in the future, that, that round gun... It has like a super round barrel. Oh, okay. The gun in Time Cop is in a thousand different movies. I see it all over the place, even today. Oh, mentioning that, um, it's Ryan, do you remember funny. that one that I texted you? It was a... Uh, um, yeah, like Ryan answered, looks at his text messages. No, I, I mean, I talked to Amber more than I talked to Ryan. <laughs> I'm going to start texting her so she can text him. I know for sure she'll, he'll answer her. Okay, so... I don't look to, at her either. <laughs> oh, so that's um, impressive. You're still together. So I came across a TV show on Netflix. What, a, oh, what was the name of it? I think I sent you the name in there too. Anyways, um, I was basically I was watching this entire show, and it was basically like I told Ryan, it was like I was watching the show, and and every thought through my head was Myth, but they did it first. <laughs> but um, oh, you're talking about um, the Hollywood weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways... Um, I wanted to watch that. Uh, no, but what he does that I thought was really cool is he goes into this studio down in, down in Southern California. I don't remember exactly where it is, but it's called Independent Studio Services. And they've been around since the 1970s. Interesting. And basically any gun that was ever in a movie, they have it in their vault. And they were talking about one that was a futuristic gun, and basically what they did was they took an AK... 47 and built everything around it's a fully functioning ak-47 it sounds like the gun from um uh starship troopers ah uh, could have been that anyways they did that what they that's what they that's what they yeah did for but that one. i thought that was really cool and they go through and it, it's almost like you're walking into <clears throat> the the <clears throat> smithsonian's gun room i mean if you guys don't yeah, know the smithsonian does have a gun room <laughs> that's and, basically why I uh, I turned that show on because I, yeah. I you started talking about that and I'm thinking I I, I think I even texted you this is uh, my my uh, the Hollywood prop guys 
oh, yeah. version of an armory is kind of right up my alley. Oh yeah, yes. I, I am. One, you know? I am wondering the permit process on that because like machine guns and stuff. So I, oh, I, I wonder. You, I'm, you sure see, I'm, I'm sure, sure they have it. I'm sure they have an FFL. That these things are kept in. Well, no, no, you no. Know, I mean, everything is going to be signed out. 400 times yeah well no i'm just i'm just wondering how they is like is there one ffl i'm, I'm just curious how they actually keep it, oh they keep like it what their licenses and everything yeah, because because technically if i remember correctly the, the like the ffl guy or something has to go with the guy because well, yeah, like, no you're gonna have a guy there with you oh yeah sure. and he so, does every time he goes out and does anything uh, the basically the the guy in charge of the whole department yeah. for them is always around him because you'd have to so he's now out there with um, him and I'm sure he does have an FFL. Especially if it's a uh, like a there's machine a couple gun. of couple of big problems that I had with that show. Um, one, it was produced to the I mean to the pitch. Oh yeah, you couldn't have produced that thing anymore. I mean, it was the most set up thing of all time. Um, which comes across as really cheesy when you have this like ex special forces dude who's really not an actor, although he's done a lot of these types of shows. Yeah, um, kind of trying to act. Delivering these really cheesy lines, you know. But um, the couple of problems I had with their with their testing was just like logistical. Yeah. Um, one, they did the uh, they tested if John McClane from the first Die Hard. <laughs> Um, would have been able to in the, in the scene, John. You remember that scene in Die Hard when he when he jumps off the top of the roof when it blows up with the uh, the fire hose? Yes, and, yeah. Sweet, and, yeah, he, yeah. and he couldn't break through the window, so he kicks off of it and he shoots the window a bunch of times and then breaks through. Right? Yeah. So they were testing to see if that was possible. Um, I the, the one part that I wanted to see was the control test, like MythBusters would have done. Okay. What is it? Does it look like the movie when he tries to do it without the bullets going through first? But they never did. The only time they did it was they shot the window and the guy went through. What did he shoot? Did he shoot it with a similar, the similar or yeah. same exact caliber? Yeah, he shot it with a nine mil Beretta and then also an MP5. Yeah. Um, could... And then the other one was when they were testing the uh, the underwater shooting thing. I Two thought things. that was pretty one, cool. There's no way the special forces guy didn't know what was going to happen in that water. I agree. Two, why the fuck would you build a nine foot tank? What you couldn't find a guy with a swimming pool? What? So was it was it trying to prove that you can fire guns underwater? No, well, it was the, uh, it was it testing was a thing from of... a TV show where a guy shot a dude through a windshield underwater. Yeah. Throw one shield underwater. Wow, that's a lot of forces acting against that bullet. But uh, so but, yeah, so there's a there's a car that's sinking and a guy inside the car, guy outside of the car in the water fires the Glock. I think it was like a Glock 19. Yeah, underwater and punches through the window into the guy's skull. Yeah, and uh, so the guy who the guy who pulled the trigger was underwater. Yeah. And yes. was the person now, underwater, the show, was it shooting somebody outside of the water? No, or every, the water? he was shooting, okay. the car went underwater, it was submerged, the detective jumped into the water, okay. fully submerged, went down, fired two rounds, one to break the windshield, one to punch through the windshield into his skull. How close was he? Um, Five feet, From six the feet? show, it looked like maybe about 18 inches from the from the. Okay. Yeah, it looked really okay, close, but I, I mean, I'm, he was I'm pretty think, I'm thinking if it's, if it's, you know, if it's like five feet. It's but, fucking full of shit. But what they did find was it was it the four fifty seven? No, they used a four fifty four and to finally punch through the window. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was the only one that went through the window, but then as soon as you see, they made it sound like it would have gone through the window and actually killed the guy on the other side. No. As I, soon as that bullet exits the window, you can see it wobble in the water. Yeah. Well, one of the but, issues so was, it was snipers. It was really disingenuous. But, but what I the, thought was really cool was the slow motion of the of the percussion. Of the Dude, bullet yeah, leaving the barrel, I thought that was really badass. Well, one, of, one of the issues <laughs> snipers have when uh, they're shooting windshields is that bullet will actually be deflected because most yeah. when, most windshields are you know they're at an angle, so and, as it comes yeah, in, the bullet's gonna. And tempered, and it's, yeah. it's it's fairly hard to actually kill a target like that because when you aim straight, it's not going to go straight. So no. you have to counteract that. Um, and a little more interesting thing, a new Firefly comic book, this is for Ryan, has been announced, and it will center on the War of Unification by oh. Boom Studios has acquired the Firefly license hmm. from Dark Horse, which surprises me that Dark Horse would, would let yeah, that go. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that, that they did that up, too. And is working on a series following the war of, uh, between the Alliance and the Independents. 
uh, fans right. will get the fans will coach. get fans will get to learn about Malcolm Reynolds and Zoe Washburn and their experiences in the war as the duo fought for the losing sides. Hmm. That's 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 interesting. I hell at this point I'm actually kind of hoping they do an animated series like uh, like a gritty like yeah, anime what style. Is Castlevania coming back. I actually like that one. If it does come back, there's a lot of ifs. It'll probably be in a couple more years. I'd be it's really su- stupid. I actually like that. Uh, there was I thought they were going pretty good for that. Well, my question is was uh, see a lot of these things like say Netflix originals. I I Netflix did not originally put money towards. So I'm wondering was this one that they just bought the rights for? Maybe. Because if it is, will they get the second season? I mean, I'm curious on how their their that that works for them. Hmm. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, they're not going to license something for one season. No. Well, didn't they do that with one show, Netflix? Mm, it was like one show that there was like one season of it, and there should have been more, but it was so shitty that I was glad they did one. Oh, because I know the the White Rabbit Project, which I really liked, they just did didn't want to do other other episodes. Yeah. But realistically, nah, it was, that it was one, Mythbusters, That too. one was not that good. I mean, I liked the f- I liked maybe like three episodes out of the entire season well the, to the, be the, honest the, the biggest problem is they were re- basically the build team was being the build team yeah. so that's the biggest issues that's one of the reasons I liked it because I, I loved the interaction between the two I well, love the building process as, as Ryan said with this one I, I I couldn't find it if it's Hollywood guns I'll have to go look up the actual title before I write the description anyways but um <clears throat> The White Rabbit project was like way overproduced, even more so than Hollywood Guns compared to what Mythbusters was. Yeah. I mean, it was like really, really overproduced. I mean, and it was, I don't know, it kind of felt like there was some forced moments when they were kind of all sitting in the chairs talking. Yeah, I, I don't think, kind of I think in another, I think if they give another season, I think they would have found its stride because I agree. I think the talking yeah. segments and the interview <laughs> segments were kind of, a little ridiculous. Yeah. I thought the studio they were in was a little ridiculous. Um, this just in, it chapter two, the follow up to last year's blockbuster horror hit. Uh, uh, poster has been released. I saw the, the trailer. Did you see the trailer for it? Not yet. No. Um, yeah. Basically, it follows 27 years later. The loser club is reunited when Pennywise makes his return. Yeah, I'm just me. I mean, I I like the one that they redid. I. I think i mean way different than the first one but i think it was still well done um they had to do it differently than the, the, the original just because i i think you would have been fighting a losing battle i think as far as um a remake of it i think it was like really well done honestly um way better than the stephen king remake of the shining i've never heard anything good about the stephen yeah. king remake everybody i know who likes the shining hates that one that i know that's because it's Absolutely I'm horrid. I'm just a sucker for Scatman Carruthers. Yeah, true. I think the biggest thing with that one is you're fighting against Stanley Kubrick. You're about a guy who had a really distinct vision, a very great style, whose style lends itself really well to that movie and that material. So I think I, I think you're fighting against that. Because Stephen yeah. King's a writer. Well, he's Steve, not, he's he's not, not a Stephen producer King or director. Stephen King adaptations yeah. are, are mm. inconsistent to, at, at best. Yeah, I actually think like all those Stephen but, King ones that were actually put out, um, other than it and The Shining, I didn't like. Like, uh, what was it? Um, there's the Tommy Knockers. There's the, thinner. Oh, thinner wasn't very good. Um, the, yeah, the thinner, Dream Catcher one was Tommy the Dream Catcher one. Christine. Christine. Yeah. I didn't really uh, like Christine. Langoliers. I liked the book. Yes, Langoliers. That's. The I, I liked the book. I didn't like the movie. <clears throat> Yeah, the problem. See, a oh. lot of them. That's the problem. Is a lot of them were like TV movies, like, yeah. like made for TV kind of shit. And that's shit, exactly you know? what but the like remake of the, the Shining 90s, was. Though, when made for TV, really sucked. Oh yeah, I, I would add Shawshank Redemption to your list of good ones. That's yeah, that, you're that, right. That, that but was, I mean, like, I'm kind of putting yeah. in the, well, in the was horror enough. flick that, though. Is yeah. what I'm kind of well, pointing you at. You know, that movie's so good though that you're like, wait, who did that? That's that's Stephen King. But that was Pet Cemetery though. Wasn't technically that what does he call it? Like a novelette? Wasn't that a super short story? Which one? Pet Cemetery? No, no, no. Um, no, no. Yeah. Um, Shawshank. Yes. Yeah. Was a short story. Yeah. The craziest thing is I've heard, I don't know how much is true, I read years ago that Stephen King for young filmmakers will let them direct something of his for like a dollar. Um, oh, hey, did you guys see The Black Tower? No. Dark Tower? No. Dark, Dark, Tower, Dark Tower, that's it. How was it? Did you see it, Ryan? No. I, I just saw a trailer for it again the other day, and I'm thinking, man, that looks interesting, but I think that movie bombed. 
It doesn't surprise me. I, um, I, I did want to see it, but it wasn't one that I was like rushing out to see in theater. You know, I mean, there was a gun battle scene. I actually watched the clip on YouTube that had me interested in it. That's like the only issue with being as busy as I am now and having children is finding time to watch stuff. I want to list my movie watch list is getting longer. I almost need to do real flicks reviews again. So but I can is see it's starting to look like my old Netflix queue B- about <laughs> hell. I'm I still pushing 500 and, Something like that. I'm still pushing through some of the anime I've been wanting to watch over the years. Yeah, same here. <clears throat> Anyways, but um, yeah, I did want to see Dark Tower, but it wasn't like one I was gonna. So I I was curious: is there any services that you guys pay for monthly? You know, like like Netflix or it, yeah, like one of those it. loot crates or anything that you guys use that you like or dislike? No, I um, basically Netflix is it. For I mean, me. yeah, I, Amazon. You know, Amazon yeah. Prime. I'm a big fan of. See, uh, just because the mostly like the online streaming stuff is really great. Amazon yeah, Prime, I'm, I have an issue with buying because it, it says two day shipping, but that's two day shipping when the company releases it. So I've literally gotten stuff like six weeks later, type of thing. Um, well, I mean, I just I take a look at the shipping before I even purchase shit, you know. But that's I mean, I'm talking mostly like <laughs> like the actual like video streaming, yeah, the streaming. shows that they do, the the movies that they have. Um, Amazon's gotten a lot of my money just because I'm buying digital movies lately. Um, I like Amazon. I like the Amazon Prime Video between them and Netflix. Netflix, they seem to have everything. Money yeah, Netflix, um, Hulu. I think I subscribe to you, but everything else is you know just through cable, HBO, Showtime. See, I don't, I don't even like, do that. I don't um, really like Hulu. But I, I was gonna. <clears throat> are you ready to get have Ryan almost jump out of his seat? <clears throat> sure. I did watch the first episode of Patriot. <laughs> oh, great. What was that? Talk about underselling how excited you are. Well, well, I'm actually I don't want to oversell my excitement just because I want to know what the actual thought of it. <laughs> I think it was great. I was. I, I think unfortunately we save I'm the rest be, of this conversation. I'm for just going to throw this out. Is I watched it off of YouTube. There was a full episode. The first episode <clears throat> was on YouTube. Unfortunately, the second one wasn't. Ooh. That's so so I only got to watch the first one. But I really liked well, it. Hopefully, hopefully that first taste was good. Yeah, I I wanted to see more. <laughs> and don't forget that first taste is always free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they always the... make you charge for the second one. <laughs> so I think one of the services that I've 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 subscribed for a couple at least a year that I've really kind of liked is Crunchyroll. I, I've always been a giant anime fan. Um, like the very first one I watched was like uh, Vampire Hunter D, The Lensman, Cyber City Odo. These these are old one, old Green Legend Ran. Matter of fact, if you're my age, you're probably the only people who've ever seen half of these. Um, so I, I love the I love the fact that I get to see a lot of the new releases. Most of the time, it's simulcast or like a week later. The only thing that I'm disappointed about it's not all anime. Like, there, there's some anime that I want to watch that I actually have to go out and hunt for because it's not like certain studios or certain releases. It's, 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 it's interesting how they do it. What do you mean? Like, Crunchyroll? Well, like, like, my original thought was, oh, cool, I'll get to see every anime released in Japan. Oh, I, this gotcha. was my original thought about it. Yes, I realize it's stupid, but... Yeah, that was pretty stupid. Um, did you really look into Crunchyroll before you did this? It's seven bucks a month, dude. Hey, whatever. Um, it's like it literally. It's seven bucks. I mean, it's it's the cheapest streaming service out there for what you get. You, you do also get a lot of uh, the, the the Japanese or the Asian drama, was like live action stuff. Netflix like six ninety nine when it started. Yeah. The the only thing I don't like about like Netflix has a decent anime, but they don't have like the entire series. Which my 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 one gripe with all of these, if the series is finished, fucking get all the seasons. That's the well, one thing that drives me nuts. But the thing about Am- or uh, Netflix is that they do want you to go to the disc, and most of the time they have all the disc. Yeah, they're actually they're, they're trying to phase out the discs because I remember uh-huh. one point, yeah, because at one point I was getting Netflix Netflix discs every other day yeah. type of thing. Same and here. <laughs> since I don't subscribe I to it, I stack like this of the envelopes. And people I know who still have it says it takes about a week. Wow, really? Yeah, they're, well, they're trying to get away from it because having physical copies of things versus just having a, a bunch of bunch of servers in somebody's colo. That's true. Um, but I, I, I really do like Crunchyroll just because the fact it gives me decent access to stuff. Um, and another platform I'm fascinated by that I don't subscribe to it because it's free, it's something called Pluto. Mm. Yeah, um, I like Pluto. 
Pluto is pretty good. It has a weird selection. It's basically IPTV, so you get some pretty weird selection of stuff. There's like a 24-hour like TNA wrestling channel, which is hilarious. Oh, I didn't see that. I have to go back um, and look. I, guess, I have Pluto. I just don't spend that much time on it. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it's pretty cool. I, 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 so I recommend Pluto and Crunchyroll. I mean, it's 7 bucks a month. Um, yeah. I, allegedly, it has you get access to the manga, but I don't usually usually read that. Yeah, I'm not in the reading manga either. I read the Naruto stuff just because I was fascinated and really bored for a couple of days. Hmm. So one other question: Would you guys ever subscribe to uh, was it Blue Plate? It's one of these things that you buy a dinner and it sends you the food and all the proper proportions. No, Ryan. Eh, probably not. <laughs> See, like, you know, it, but I am it, lazy. But it's, you know, I actually looked at it initially because it's actually not a bad, um, it's actually a pretty interesting service that they do. They actually do, like John said, they send you enough food for like two meals or I don't know if they do more than that. They probably do. But, but they just come up and they, it's basically like you don't really know what menu you're going to get. There's things that you can pick from it, but, you know, and you can say you know, like you select like a bunch of different ones and then they'll send you a, a basically a box with the ingredients in it. And, and, and you it's make it. the it's proper not, proportions. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. And they give you directions and how to do it and you do it for yourself. So here, not a bad idea. My thought with it, and this is, this is the reason why I always thought it would be cool if I was single, was the fact that it's a great way to not only introduce, just introduce yourself to food, but also a great way to introduce, your, introduce yourself to cooking. Yeah. Because you get like a couple of meals and you get to do stuff um, that you would, A, never try, or, or B, you would know what to do. It comes with the instructions. I, I always thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, I would not never yeah. pay the, the penalty, just be the, the penalty being the price because it's not the <laughs> cheapest thing in the world. No, but I think, I mean, with the society that we're in nowadays, I mean, I think it's a great idea because there's a lot of people that are kind of like – into little eclectic services like that. There's like snack crates that they do. Um, I always like was that there was so, like horror crate gives you like horror movie stuff. Hmm. That'd be kind of fun. There's a loot crate which is for geeks. My brother does. There's a um, lot of crates out there. Like a, it's like a alpha crate or some shit, and it's like they send you like kind of like uh, survival gear and shit like that. I want a weapons crate. crate. I want something. There is a weapons crate out there, but it does not ship to California, you fucking pieces of shit. Damn. Yeah, oh, I know. I'm going to create like an AOW kit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I really want is an ammo crate. That way I can, you know, <laughs> I'll pay this much a month and you just send me a fucking box of, you know, 45 ACP, 40 S&W. Hell, I'll take 9 millimeter. I know people who want no, it. No, but I was watching, I watched one of where some guy was They're opening up like, $90. like a weapons crate <laughs> and he's pulling it out and he's got like stilettos, butter, like full on butterfly you knives, hyenas? you know, just a bunch of shit. And I'm just like, dude, that is an awesome crate. And then <laughs> I was like thinking about it like. I'm looking at all the weapons he's pulling out. I'm like, illegal in California, illegal in California, illegal in California. Oh, maybe that. No, nope, I'm pretty sure that's illegal in California, too. Yeah, and that's what the guy was saying, too. He's like pulling this stuff out. And he's like, it would suck for you guys in California. <laughs> like, I want to slap you right now. Seriously. My, my, <laughs> I'm, I'm missing range days so much because of how onerous it is in here in California. I'm like, right now, my AR is in two pieces. That's how annoying it is. I'm actually considering taking up archery. No idea how to fucking do it, but I'm considering it. Just because oh, I the best, dude. just give it a few weeks, and California will start making that illegal too. Um, Can't have broadheads anymore. <laughs> it was really hard to strap her, you know, to strap the women to the the shafts, though. Hey, just yeah, get a get a recurve. I I'm just I I'm really missing like the, the the activity of it. So I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. So it's on my list of stuff like to cross it. Well, it's the it's the same discipline. Pretty, you know, it's the same discipline as shooting. Yeah. Well, the, the difference is I've been shooting since I was six. <laughs> it's a, I've never so well, yeah. I'm, I mean, you got to account for arrow drop too, and I mean, you can, well, yeah, like, that's one of the reasons I was looking I forward to it. trying it. Granted, if I do it in mine where I live now, well, the HOA will yell at me. Dude, you have the perfect spot. Well, I'm thinking of your parents' spot, actually. Never mind. Well, that's, but, um, that's one of the reasons why I'm considering it, because I can get a cheap bow, um, whatever I decide. And, cause I'll, I'll, you come over here and hunt cats. Yeah, well, look, get a, get a recurve so you kind of get the technique. I mean, you know, if you're going to get like a compound or something like that, your, your, your technique's going to change when you learn. Um, 
But, uh, yeah, you know, a few arrows and whatnot and maybe some reflecting tools and shit like that, yeah, to, but, you know, kind of get into the process. But you were but you were saying, I mean, like, compound versus recurve, it's, like, so weird to go from a recurve to a compound, though. It, it well, really it is. is. It is definitely more beneficial to start with a recurve to sort of get your get your technique, get your, get your things down, um, and then move on to, you know, and especially start, like, a light pole. You know, get like a like a thirty five, forty pound pole. No, start well, like a Mongolian. No, I was gonna still I was Bareback gonna do the old horseback. fashioned British longbow. I'm gonna start at a hundred pounds, something nobody but a giant would be I able to pull. I still find that hilarious that technically all boys of the age of fourteen or sixteen in England are supposed to be trained with the longbow every single year. By law. By law. Um actually my favorite <laughs> I think that's I've, hilarious. I visited <laughs> uh, England. 10, 15 years ago, and allegedly, if you steal a cr- uh, crown jewels, it's law that they skin you alive and nail you to a church door. Yeah, don't, wouldn't surprise me. Which I think well, is hilarious. One of the funniest things is uh, I was listening to one of the princesses, or no, one of the queens. One of the queens was watching in the garden, and there was guards that would walk around every time, and they would stop at this one spot and just stand there. And there was, like, nothing there. And for the longest time, she was wondering what it was, and she finally asked, and they dug through the archives, and one of the queens made it a royal command that somebody had to go over and protect a rose that was growing there, like, a couple hundred years before, and it never got rescinded. Wow. So the guards were still under obligation to stand in that spot for hundreds of years, not knowing why. (laughs) That's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's just funny that it was never rescinded, so they were, it just kind of got passed down by a guard by a guard, <laughs> just saying, okay, you got to go stand here. Why? Royal decree? <laughs> I mean, that was really what the, I'm sure they, that's all they had to say. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a favor out there, uh, for you out there, if you guys are into bow hunting or bows, what do you recommend? You give us some information. Uh, con- Boar hunting. You can contact us via our Facebook page, which just is don't get The drunk. Mad Trio. I think it's the Mad Trio podcast or Mad Trio show. I don't remember which one I set up, but set it up as. Um, and for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, thank you for listening. Goodbye.